Houdini just released its preview for version 20.5. Here's what I want to share about the latest improvements. Three key features that I want to highlight are the new MPM solver, which is basically a new workflow to create chunky snow, sandy oceans, epic mud, and even Houdini branded swirl ice cream. Copernicus, yes, he's back from the dead and ready to put Houdini at the center of your 3D workflow. And let's just say we've all been waiting for recipes. Sure, almost every studio I've worked at has had a system for sharing node setups, but they almost are always half broken. So having a dedicated system is going to be game changing. Now let's dive right into some of these. MPM. Of course, there's long technical papers written about MPM. It stands for material point method, but I want to attempt to give a simplified and quick explainer on how it actually works and why it's useful. Basically, you set a collection of points and these points have certain features about how they should act. For example, a group of points could have a high amount of mass or velocity to then move in a certain way. Then these points need a grid to set them up and communicate like a hive. So this grid is used to make calculations that encompass a large amount of points. And then that grid gives the information back to the particles for an update. It's similar to how flip simulations are calculated, but the key difference lies within the dynamics. MPM uses solid mechanic equations, which relies on fixed shapes that are resistant to deformation. Flip uses fluid dynamic equations, which means they have a dynamic shape and are continuously deforming. Moving on to Copernicus, maybe he's most known for putting the sun in the center of our universe, despite some people disagreeing. Houdini is now getting clever with naming conventions as they too want to put cops back in the center of our Houdini universe. Cops has notoriously been Houdini's severely outdated image and compositing network that hasn't had much love in years. Finally, after a few weeks of internet lawyers destroying Adobe's reputation, maybe those mass market designers can switch from using Adobe products like Substance and After Effects and go with much more user-friendly experience by using Houdini. That is, the only problem is they need to learn how to use Houdini. Perhaps the most exciting feature of Copernicus is the ability to finally take your simulations and geometry and plug them in to make tileable and procedural textures. If you're a Houdini evangelist, I don't really see why you'd need to use Substance Designer after this, assuming side effects makes it easier to export all the necessary texture maps and UDIMs for 3D assets. And now I wanna talk about recipes. Recipes is Houdini's solution for you to not have to use ChatGPT to create setups, as who knows if one day they will just move all their templates to certain recipes to cut out the middleman. For a long time, at studios, TDs, and artists that don't care about job security and knowledge gating have wanted to pass their setups along for other team members. The only problem is, most of the time, they can't get enough support to properly implement the copying of nodes and pasting them into another hip file. Now that we have a dedicated system for doing this, who knows what will happen to the shelf as it is now seemingly irrelevant. Just like chefs and bakers of old, you too now have the opportunity to easily create your own custom Houdini recipes to satisfy the appetites of your demanding VFX soup and pesky Hollywood clients, assuming Hollywood still exists after 2024. There's a quick overview of three features from the Houdini sneak peek you wouldn't want to miss. If there's other features I didn't cover, let me know if you want to talk about them in the comments below. Do what all YouTubers say, like and subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching.